the video you sent me. Thanks. Oh, you did. Cheers, brother. Good yeah, to see you again. Nice to see you too. Yeah. Uh, do you want to? Uh, do you want to do another one? Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Cool, man. You can you can do whatever, and I'll just give you your first name. I'm gonna chop up the. Uh, yeah. We email back and forth. That's yeah. right. Josh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah BK. Nice to see you again. Nice um, so if you want, I, are you are you ready to do it now? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So your first name and uh, and and why you're why you're here or why you're holding whatever you're doing. Gotcha. Awesome, man. Your first name and why? Actually, you know, we'll get you. We'll get you the backdrop of, of Queens Park. Just rotate this way, and uh, that'll be a good. And that'll be a good thing. So, sorry. Your first name and why you're holding this. Well, my name is Josh, and I'm here to stand up for our freedoms and our rights. And uh, you know, you interviewed me last week, uh, asked me about the significance of an upside down flag, and. Uh, you know, again, I want to reiterate, while some may find it uh, disrespectful, you know, I can understand why it's a symbol of our freedom, symbol of our country, our nation, our values, and for someone to so turn it upside down or to deface it, it is disrespectful. But again, the significance of an upside down flag goes back a long time ago, before we had cell phones, before we had, you know, good radio communication. Uh, when naval ships would would uh, be in distress or to have they have some sort of emergency, what they would do is they would lower their flag, turn it upside down, and raise it. And anyone that goes by will know that it's a symbol of distress, so that they need help. And right now in our country, the way Trudeau is running things, the way Doug Ford is, is handling things, we need help. Nothing is getting better. Nothing is changing. We're still stuck at home. A lot of us are out of work. You know, we're being attacked for being called names for attending these sort of protests. I, for one, recently lost my job this week for it. And you know what? If, if I, knowing what, what happened, and if I were to go back in time, I would do the same thing. Someone needs to stand up for our rights. If, if people are gonna be at home, you know, we are there for them as well. The people that, that attack us, that, that want to destroy us, that would mean us harm, we're here for them. We're here for our grandchildren. Because if nothing happens now, it will only, only get worse. Fair enough, man, fair enough. Um, anything else? No. Okay, beautiful, man. Yeah. What else is going on? Are you, are you, uh, did, you did you get the offline info war stuff I, I sent you about that? Where we, we go out to posters, flyers, and, and drop them off in places? I think so. Yeah. In the body of the email below that, um, I've got a video of what we did with Toronto Truth Seekers back in 2009 against swine flu. Okay. We had meetings. We, basically what happened was we were watching red pill stuff on the internet. We all wanted to you know, do more than just watch stuff. We wanted to get along with other people. Somebody started a meetup group. We met. We became friends. And we felt like acting. We set up a table at Dundas Square. I've seen those people. There you go. That yeah. was us. Right? Okay, cool. So there you go. So we set up a table at Dundas Square. We had thousands of parents coming up to us to get vaccine exemption forms. Thousands of people taking flyers, posters, DVDs. Yeah. And then we also, a bunch of us guys especially, you know, we're physical. We get the backpacks full of flyers. We dropped them off everywhere. We posted yeah. everywhere and so on. So I think that we can do that now. And if we for sure, cameras, for sure. For cameras, sure. we're media allowed to be outside. The cops definitely won't bother us if we're not bothering people. For sure. So, yeah. And you know what? Honestly, the cops in Toronto are a lot better than the cops, let's say, in Edmonton. Yeah. Like, I mean, again, some of the people that did get arrested, I'm not saying they did, but some of the people instigate. And they're, they're there to to get to go with the police into acting to, right. to do stuff like that so that does happen but for the most part especially in toronto the police are, are honest i have a i have a deep respect for them yeah. you know the boots on the ground uh, people the front lines that you see yep they're like they have a job to do and they, they they're doing it to support their families it's the people up, sorry it's the people up top that are the problem no i'm with you i've dealt like with like a bunch they dealt with me a bunch and typically it's cool it's just like guys again you know it's, it's, the, about it's, the, it's the chief that for example i don't know if you heard of this pastor david lynn uh, he was no. this black guy, pastor. Right. He got arrested at Pride for disturbing the peace and right. mischief, you know, for speaking against, speaking out against Pride. Right. And he was charged, and through, with those charges, the city actually implemented a, a, a private members bill. Right. Uh, to ban groups like him from utilizing city space. So he, his church was actually kicked out of the community center that they called home. Right. That they were paying for, and just. 
a few days ago, he, he posted a message that the crown of the case actually dropped all charges against him. Wow. So what does that say about how the media smeared people like us? Yeah. That the city who used those charges to to put forward a private member's bill, that it even waived referral deferral to executive committee, so the public wasn't even able to make deputations on it. Wow. We can't even speak on this case. Can't even be an amicus friend. I've been I, like I've, I was following the motion as soon as it was brought brought forward in council. Right. And what's supposed to happen is they're supposed to make a vote to move it forward. Right. And typically, once the, there's if there's a private members bill motion. Right. It goes to executive committee. That's where you know there's a group of councillors in a room where right. the public can sign up to make deputations to speak with us. Right. Whether right. They agree or they don't agree. Right. And they waive that, so it was it was automatically approved. Wow. It, and it, it was almost unanimous. There's only like five or six councillors that were either not there right. or voted no. Right. Wow. What garbage, man! I can't believe they get away with that. Yeah. So that that motion should be struck down. That bill. That. Yeah. Right. That's horrible, dude. That's horrible. Well. Ah. We'll keep this. We'll have to connect. Are you from Toronto? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. We'll have to connect. We'll have to connect outside of this. Oh, yeah. We'll have to get together with some other guys, especially. Sure. It's and honestly be we'll a to, lot we'll better to, to, to be able to meet in person. Yes. There's nothing like meeting, meeting in person that, to, move, to talk, talk and discuss things. Yeah. Like, I recently visited a bunch of friends I haven't seen for three months, and it was like the greatest day. Oh, ever. sure. The internet people are kind of censored or self-censored or cucked and quiet. Yeah. And then sometimes off the internet, you see the same people are like, are you really that person or are you the kind of yeah. straight up shit talking dude yeah. that I really knew, right? Yeah. So um, I'm with you. It's, it's always better to meet in person. So, so yeah, keep, keep in touch. And yeah, if you can get a bunch of people in Toronto to get together, like I'm all, I'm all Yeah, man. I, I think we should. I think we should. It worked last time for us. Like I said, we got to know each other. We became, we became friends. Yeah. And then instead of, you know, you sharing stories about how bad things are, me sharing stories about how bad things are, what we've seen, we felt like acting on it. Yeah. And then we went out there, and, and guys like you and me, just backpacks full of flyers, drop them off here, drop them off there, leave them in hands, put them on windshields, yeah. and uh, give people a chance to think for themselves. You know, so awesome, brother. I'll do some more filming here for this video, but uh, let's catch up. Cheers. All right. How you doing, man? How you doing? Not too bad. I see you, Derek Sloan for PM Sign. He's done some cool stuff. Do you want to give me your first name and talk about why you're holding this? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Let's get you with the backdrop at Queen's Park, if you don't mind, because that's kind of a, we're, we're, we're taking over. So, awesome, brother. So, um, give me your first name and uh, and why you're holding the sign. Well, my name's Mike, and I'm holding the sign here, Derek Sloan, for Prime Minister, because he was the only Conservative member to go out there and criticize Theresa Tam for who she really is and called her out for what, for her corruption and what she's been doing, because she's anti-Canadian, just like Trudeau is. And he's the, he's the first realist guy that I've ever seen who's pro-Canadian, he's a nationalist, he supports um, the rights of gun owners, he wants to scrap the carbon tax, he, uh, he wants to end abortions, and um, he is a great guy to talk to, you know, he's, um, I talked to him the other day and he's an awesome, awesome man, and, uh, and I would not be holding a sign if I had hope and I believe that he's going to win, right? And uh, I pray for him every day um, because he is the only candidate that God has chosen to run our country. Okay, he's very, 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 and he's a Christian as well. And we need more, we need more nationalists, we need more pro-Canadians. We need people who are going to want to open our, because he wants to open up the Alberta and um, Saskatchewan um, energy sectors and our oil sectors. Because when those, when those sectors are opened up, our country prospers, we get more jobs, especially in Ontario, because Ontario, we are, um, I like to call us the Michigan of Canada, we are the manufacturing province. We do a lot of our manufacturing here, and a lot of it's gone down. So I believe when we open up places like Saskatchewan and Alberta, and especially out west, we get more manufacturing jobs here to help them. Right? Fantastic, so, yeah. fantastic. Um, and, and would you like me to email you a copy of this? Sure. Yeah, okay, sure. I made a video last week, about a half an hour of highlights of this. Plus, I post the raw video online uh, so anybody else can use it. But you can scratch down your email address there. And, uh, and yeah, and then I'll email you a copy of this, and hopefully you like it. Yeah. Um, but I'm with you on Derek Sloan in the sense that uh, he seems like a, a good guy relative to what's out there, especially. Yeah.
he's a, he's an awesome man to talk to. Like like honestly, like I've he's very honest. You. We've right. got we've got yeah. so few politicians to cheer for here. Yeah. Like few, so few people yeah. getting uh, excited. So I've got I've got is that is that Michael? Yeah, it's, it's I accidentally put it's a lowercase m, but okay. it's Michael Gregorio 5 at gmail.com. Okay, Michael Gregorio. Okay, 5 and it's okay. Yeah. Just gonna make sure I see that as an A. Um, so uh, sorry, mate. It's not your. It's not my handwriting is just as bad. Uh, yeah. In fact, it's probably worse with this marker. I actually have a better pen, but I forgot it. Yeah. Greg, and that's Oreo. Yeah. O5. Okay. Uh, cool, brother. BK, nice to meet you, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so Derek is, is, is that guy. Yeah, nice to meet yeah. you, brother. Oh, yeah, and um, I really believe that he was uh, chosen uh, by God to run our country. Fantastic. And uh, you that's, know that's what? Good, that's, good, uh, that's good recommendation. <laughs> yeah, especially from God, you know that. Yeah. And, uh, you know what? He's very pro-life. You know what I mean, and and I got to promote. So I'm glad that, I'm, that you're giving me the platform to so I could go out and speak about him because people need to know, right? And well, I, I think I think we should all have respect for all opinions. I'm also you know more pro-life than not, but I think the most important thing is for us to respect each other and not have people who aren't hate it. And that's right? what he wants to do. He wants to reunite the country, which Trudeau does not want to do. He wants to destroy. He wants to cause. Uh, division right and you can't have people like that wanting to run a country right because that that just you're just asking for destruction yeah right? you know and that's the thing when uh, people like Trudeau and 